Hi right, everyone, welcome back to Cody's Lab. So today I'm going to be making some soda lime glass, which is of course the most common glass that you'd encounter in everyday life in things such as window panes and glass bottles. It is called soda lime glass because two of the main ingredients are sodium carbonate, or soda ash, and calcium carbonate, which when you heat it, it forms lime. The main ingredient, which you probably know, of course, is sand. This right here is the purest, whitest quartz sand that I could find. There's very little impurities, it's essentially pure silicon dioxide, and the small particle size means that this will melt quickly. This is exactly what you're looking for when you want to make glass. But you may have noticed those are not the only ingredients. Most uh, recipes that you find uh, only list the main three, but there are many different types of fining agents that is used in glass making. I've got four here that I'm going to be using today. This is potassium nitrate, which is essentially high temperature bleach. It's an oxidizer and it burns out impurities in the glass, thus making it clear. Some uh, magnesium sulfate, which uh, form a sulfur dioxide gas, as well as acting as a high temperature flux. The uh, sulfur dioxide gas will help uh, collect together other bubbles together and bring them out of the melt. I also have some alumina, or aluminum oxide, this increases the chemical resistance of the glass. And over here I have one that you might think is a little odd. This is antimony. This is a replacement for arsenic. The uh, arsenic oxide, or antimony oxide in this case, also helps remove the bubbles from the melt. Okay, time to weigh out the ingredients. So I'm going to start with 7.3 grams of silica sand. Just weigh it out here with my precision scale. Probably don't really need to go out to this kind of precision because uh, really there's quite a range of what will actually form glass. So, 7.1, 7.3, excellent. Now I'm going to need approximately one gram of calcium carbonate. This uh, very fine calcium carbonate powder, by the way, is actually chalk. Not the sidewalk chalk, this is actually the uh, chalk that is formed by animal remains settling out of the ocean. You know, microscopic uh, shells and stuff. Now for the soda ash, I'm going to need one and a half grams of this. The uh, soda ash, which uh, can be extracted from trees, this stuff came out of the Great Salt Lake, but uh, this uh, lowers the melting point of the glass and makes it uh, workable. The lime makes it so that water doesn't dissolve it because just the uh, sodium carbonate and silica together is water soluble. So I'm going to need approximately 0.1 grams of aluminum oxide. Not very much. And about the same amount of magnesium sulfate. That already brings me up to my uh, target of 10 grams, but I am going to add just a tiny amount of the potassium nitrate and an even smaller amount of antimony. Okay, I should just about do it. I think I went a little over on the antimony, so I'll just add in just a little bit more potassium nitrate to compensate. That should do her. So here's my rough glass mixture, and I'm going to transfer it over into this little ceramic dish. Now this isn't the ideal crucible, uh, I think it should work. There's a chance that the uh, glass will actually dissolve the ceramic, and it certainly will dissolve this glaze. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what that glaze is made out of, but I don't think it'll hurt it. It might make the glass a little bit cloudy, but you, know, you guys will still get the point. I of course can't use a graphite crucible because uh, graphite will dissolve into the glass with carbon resulting in a product which is, it'll be black or some off color, which is not really what I want. So here is my little metal melting furnace which I've used in many videos previously. Now this thing gets up to about 2000 degrees Fahrenheit or that many degrees Celsius, which is unfortunately about 500 degrees Fahrenheit shy of what I need to actually melt glass. That's where this uh, microwave comes in. I'm going to use this to uh, finish it off. But uh, for now, this guy's job is primarily to decompose the calcium and sodium carbonates into calcium and sodium oxide. 
That'll start around 1600 and should be fully complete by the time it reaches 2000. So most of you probably know that glass does not react in a microwave. I mean, this glass platter in here, for instance, if it did react, this would be a problem. Also, you might be able to notice that the glass window on the front of the microwave has a metal screen to keep the microwaves from going right through it. And that's all true. Glass is completely transparent to microwaves unless it's melted. See, glass is an ionic liquid. It conducts electricity, and you may know that when things conduct electricity in the microwave, they get hot and start fires. But hopefully I can control that, and instead of starting a fire, I'll make some glass. So unfortunately my other furnace is still mad at me for uh, leaving it outside in the rain. So I'm switched over to this other furnace here, and also a slightly different uh, melting dish for this alumina foam uh, block here. Okay, the furnace is at 1720, which uh, should be hot enough to have driven off most of the volatiles. So, let's get this set up. Let's see if we can turn it to glass. Ooh, that's warm. Okay. So it's already mostly liquefied. It's mostly the uh, sodium carbonate has melted and has formed sodium oxide. And let's cook it. But the microwave is keeping it hot. Looks like it's getting hotter too. That's exactly what I want. I'm going to have to keep it hot for a fairly long time so that the bubbles have time to come out of the mixture. So I'll come back in about uh, five minutes and we'll see how it's doing. Let's uh, see what we got in here. It's very hot. Looks like it is glass, but it's still full of bubbles. So I think what's gonna have to happen here is I'm gonna have to run this microwave for a really long time. Well, let's get to it. Let's try 30 minutes. So what's happening here is the uh, glass, when it's a liquid, the ions are free to move about so it conducts electricity and that absorbs the microwave radiation thus causing it to heat up. Doing it this way I can achieve much higher temperatures because the heat is more concentrated than I can achieve with the furnace. Look at it go. So it gets hot, but not hot as I need it to get. So let's set this over top of it to add some insulation. Hopefully that'll work. So the microwave seems to have stopped heating the glass. Either I've ruined the microwave or there's some sort of high temperature shut off. So it's not producing any more microwaves, which means this is now cold. Let's uh, put this over in the furnace here so we don't break the glass. I guess I'll let the microwave cool off and we'll see if uh, we can take another shot at it. All right, microwave's back online, so it was just overheated. What I think is kind of interesting is, it looks like you've got two spots on either side of the glass puddle, which are hottest, with almost like a line drawn between them. And I guess that's because it's generating an electric current between those two spots. So I'm probably going to put the dish over top of it to insulate it again. And then we're going to run it for as long as I can. And this will probably be as far as I'm going to go. Okay, it sounds like the microwave shut off again. Oh, and I broke my little dish. But, look at that. Isn't that lovely? Now that it's mostly cooled down to room temperature, Let's see if we can pry out a big piece of this glass. Yeah, it looks like my brick broke. That's alright, I expected it not to survive. Alright, there's a piece of glass right there. Let's see if I can clean it up a little bit. And I guess we'll try to remelt it and form and make something out of it. One problem I've noticed using the uh, alumina is uh, around the edges and on the bottom, some, some of the alumina actually dissolved into the glass, 
which uh, made it extra viscous so the bubbles were even harder to get out but there you go so here's the plan I'm gonna soften it to the point that I can cut it and move it with a knife and uh, hopefully it sticks to this ceramic here and I'm gonna like scrape off the clear glass using this knife I can't really melt the glass with this torch but I can soften it it's like it's stuck See if we can work it off. You know what this is? This is a knife versus red hot glass. <laughs> there it is. I burned my glove on it. So that's something. Let's uh, quickly put that back in the furnace so it cools slowly. So there it is. I've managed to cool off my glass bead without it breaking. And look at that. I've also put it on a chain so that it can be used as a necklace. <laughs> and uh, it is a little bit cloudy. There are still some bubbles and some alumina that didn't dissolve into it. But uh, as you can see, it is clear. Light still does pass through it. There you go. <laughs> Someday I'd like to make a larger piece of glass straight from sand, perhaps a uh, glass bottle or even a window. But for that I'm going to need a much better furnace. And in fact, there's some rumors going around that uh, Grant Thompson is building such a furnace. And there's a planned collaboration between him, Make Everything, and I to see if we can do just that. So, hope you guys stay tuned for that, and I'll see you then. In case you're wondering, this glass is completely insoluble and should be safe to eat off of.